Well, if you don't have a pot to, as you know, the old expression, here's one for you right here. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So I'm sitting here in Cadiz, Kentucky, on one of the porcine pals that are lining the streets here. They're sponsored by various businesses around town. This is a farm area, amongst other things, and so pigs are precious and they have them all over the streets. So much so that the next place we're going is named after a pig. It is the Purple Pig Antiques and Artisans, and we're going to go take a look at that. Now, when they say artisans, a lot of times you'll see antiques mixed with other things. Sometimes it's an art and local craft group that does antiques as well. Sometimes it's a store that mixes antiques and new things in a decor type of place, uh, such as the one we're passing here, Cranberry Creek Rustics, where there's going to be some antique and vintage items mixed in with new decor. So when you see antiques on a sign, it doesn't always mean the same thing. Here's the antique part of Cranberry Creek Rustics, for example. No, this is a different store. See, there's a bunch. This is Samples Antiques. Okay. I'm still learning, Kate, is there's a lot of stores that are not open on early days of the week, but open on the weekend. Now we're on a Monday, so some of these we'll have to come back and catch another time. And here we are at the Purple Pig, and the first thing I see in the window, which makes me happy, are some true antique and vintage items, including Fenton glass, copper, kitchen kettles and other pieces that make me think that we might find something in here. So let's go take a look. Well, the bad news is that Purple Pig had to close right at four because she had a water heater leak at home and she invited us back. But I had just enough time to run in and buy this amazing, huge creamsicle orange, bittersweet, whatever you want to call it, swung vase. You rarely see these tall ones. I paid $38. It was marked no discount. I don't care. These sell for 100 in this size. Very hard to find the big size. Now, some people say this is Ellie Smith. I've seen them before in the clear colors with the hobnail marked Kanawha glass out of West Virginia. So there's some controversy about that, but there's no controversy about the fact that these are really popular and this huge size is hard to find. So I'm very excited. Even though we didn't get to show the rest of her shop, we'll just have to come back and do another video sometime. Cadiz is a county seat and it's right at one of the fingers of the Lake Barkley part of Land Between the Lakes Recreational Area. And so it's a pretty good tourist attraction. It's pretty busy here today. We are happy about that because it means the next place we go will definitely be open long enough for us to film some more. Next door to the Cadiz Antique Mall is Cherokee Antiques. The fellow who owns this is a really nice guy. He's got interesting stuff. It's a neat place to shop. This box is tramp art. All these little chip carved pieces were stuck together to make this box a lot more interesting and have adornments. It's something that you see really from the early 1900s, but it was especially understood to come from the Depression era by a lot of people, although a lot of it dates earlier. But in the Depression, a lot of people who were without jobs would use little chips of wood and make things out of them and sell them, and that's how they made a living. It's very collectible. It's a whole genre in and of itself, and it's not easy to find good pieces in good condition anymore. This one is priced at 130 and a lot of tramp art sells in that price range, so this is a pretty neat piece. Got this really great butterfly display. These were done in Japan in the 1950s and 60s as specimen collections. And when you can find one intact and well taken care of, they're still wonderful specimens, and it's nice to see them preserved. Nice painted scenic lamp there. Here's something I want to show you because there's a lot of these running around and people are starting to get confused about them. This is not an original. It is a copy of a regimental Stein from Germany from about 1900. Look how the printing goes down into the line. They wouldn't have allowed that to happen in the old days. It's kind of crooked because it was just sort of slapped on there. And you can see there's a real indefinite aspect to the transfer. The Germans were just more precise than this. And when you look at the bottom, it is shiny bright new. 
and has a fairly new mark on it. These were done probably 30 years ago now. Perfectly nice, perfectly fine in a collection. Just don't think that it's actually from 1889 because it isn't. Oh, how I wish they had the other bookend to go with this. This guy is so cool. It is a very heavy owl. And it is some sort of a uh, pot metal with probably a cast iron base, it looks like. Really neat. Great design. It's only $25 because there's only one, but you know, it's almost worth getting because it's such a great face. Enjoy Coca-Cola while you shop. Place bottle here. These little two bottle holders are very hard to find, actually. And you could hang this from your shopping cart and push it around. This would be from... I think about 1950 is when enjoy became their buzzword, and it's priced at 65 I like this cased glass bohemian dresser set. You have an atomizer on the left. It's the milk glass that's cut through to show the amber, and then gold painted. Looks like it's $125 for the set of four, which is not a bad price for two cologne bottles and a smaller powder box and the atomizer. That's really pretty good. This is cool. This is a German silver. When you see German silver, that means nickel. It's not actually silver at all. But it is a triple cigar holder. And because of that, it's certainly worth the $45 they're asking for. That's pretty neat. And then you've got a couple of the old style blackjacks here for $17.50 apiece. Cute little shell souvenir spoon for $12 with the sterling handle. That seems like a good price. And then the Bakelite Domino set is $75. And then you see there is definitely interest in old ammo packs. You see the Tommy Gun Special Thompson submachine gun blanks. A little bit harder to find. The machine gun blanks next to it. Winchester. Those are all going to be 1930s vintage, and they are priced between $29 and $49 apiece. On the left is a piece of Weller Bonita, and you don't see that pattern very often, and it is artist-signed underneath. So that's kind of a fun thing to show because it's a little different, all hand-painted. And then something that I definitely need and am going to get, you see there's a Royal Worcester China sign, and then Minton's. And I've got the Mittens Queen's Beasts, and that's only $12.50. There's not that many dealer signs out there, because they just made them for the shops that were carrying this stuff. They weren't meant to be sold to collectors, so I will get it. And next to it is a very cute little RS Prussia sauce pot with the original spoon and the handle. This would have been considered a mustard pot, but people would have used it for all sorts of things. And maybe you'll be able to see under here the RS Prussia mark. Not sure if I can capture it, but I'm going to try. It's on the bottom of that piece there. It's the green wreath with the red printing. This is a 70s era artist who I see doing a lot of golf related items. And he tended to have this whimsy about him where he also did these very mysterious medieval looking forests with lots of curly cues. And in this case, something staring back at this poor hapless golfer who has gone way into the rough. If you look in the water behind him, you see a pair of eyes staring at him there too. It seems that he is surrounded. They only have $20 on this. These were just regular prints and they were fun and they were common in their day, but it is something I see people starting to collect. And then here we've got these whiskey jugs. I'm going to take a couple of them with me today. I think they're great. Well, here is a dollar box to root around in. And I usually don't spend much time with dollar boxes because they generally have been pretty juried. But I see a sheath here. I think it's actually pretty cool with the buffalo on it. The knife may be gone, but I find a lot of people who need these sheaths. And for a dollar, I think I'll just have to take that. For the old Kilgore cap guns... This little box of lubricated disc caps. Extra loud, safe, and harmless. Good box. I think for a dollar we'll get that too, because I get cap gun collectors looking for those. Here's an old Christmas candle, originally 10 cents, now a dollar. It's a little bit warped. That's an unfortunate side effect of keeping these things in storage over the years. Classified list and international register of daffodil names. Who knew they had to classify such important information? I'm sure for a flower aficionado, that would be a really cool thing. I like the daffodils. They have the daffodil parade in Puyallup, Washington, where the big antique shows are. And here's one more cap gun. These are stallions. But stallion is 
not the brand name. I think the N for Nichols is our brand name there. Yeah, I might need that too. Well, if you don't have a pot to, as you know, the old expression, here's one for you right here. Marked down to $290. This would have been from a hotel room. And yes, it does have the chamber pot inside. It is for what you think, but the idea was that you had a lovely bench to sit on most of the time. And it's nice and old from about 1900. You see the tiger rays. So you know those are the older oak trees back when we let them grow that big. Oh, and look, some corn cobs to finish your business with. How unpleasant. And then this is a cute little European carved cupboard. Just a nice small thing, but these are handy to go on a wall where you need extra space. And this one says it is circa 1880 and it's a pipe cabinet. Ah, look at that. Now this is much more interesting inside than I expected and that's why it's priced at $4.95. This actually is not a form I've seen before. I'm glad I stopped to open it up. These look like little places that would have been humidors that would pull out. Those seem to be gone. And then you've got all these other cubby holes and down here, here's the match striker. So it really was intended for smoking pipes originally made in Germany based on that kind of black forest walnut and the designs with the gothic arches. Okay now this guy, this little alligator, is a German toothpick holder from the 1910s or 20s and I think he's priced under $20 which means I might take him. And then I also like the cocktail kids. Look at those bottle stopper and two bottle openers each with an X and one I because they're a little bit crocked. That's kind of fun and that's only priced at 18 so I might have to have that as well. I'm finding some stuff here today. This is from when Warner Brothers decided to license the Roadrunner so that Plymouth Roadrunners could use them in the advertising. And beep beep indeed with that 383. This really turned out a whole lot of horsepower. 335 horsepower at 5200 RPM. It was a pretty hot car. This is going to be from about 1970 and just this ad framed is $55. But old advertising can be money. Here you've got two old Winchester rifle envelopes that are framed and they're priced at 22 And this is neat. You see a lot of these hoop back chairs. They were very common and inexpensive in their time. The seats were made out of pressed wood but this one has a Pepsi bottle cap with the single dot priced at $99. And behind, speaking of car advertising, there is the Chevy 2, also known as the Nova. It ended up just being called the Nova. This is 1963 when it came out. They came out with this because they needed a practical little compact car that was not experimental like the Corvair, which was having lots of problems. Now this is a big sheet ad. It's only $25, and for a car ad that was big and would have been shown at a dealer, that's not a bad price. I'm kind of tempted. One thing about antique malls and stores, and I have to admit I've been guilty too, you end up losing things under other things. So this little bench here is priced at $39 with the hairpin legs and this really neat black and white upholstery. If it's in good shape I'm kind of tempted by that. This just has a good style to it. This looks like it's right out of the 1930s. It's got the original upholstery which is worn but seems to be in good overall shape. And how do they have this price? This one's $149. So while I'm thinking of it, Please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. Here is a bunch of fun and happy carnival chalkware. You've got pigs and clowns and a bear sitting in a recliner and this happy guy with the hat on. All of these, including Donald Duck and Humpty Dumpty, would have been prizes at a fair or a carnival. Donald Duck's only priced at 49 That's pretty good for him. You see these as low as 28 They're a fun collectible area, and of course they were not well made. They were inexpensive and lightweight and easy to chip, as you see there. So finding them in good condition is the trick. Well, it makes all sorts of sense that this would be Louisville stoneware because it is a big old pot for Kentucky Burgoo with all of the recipes. You use every kind of meat possible. You throw in corn and tomatoes and onions and parsley and vinegar and lima beans and okra and celery and potatoes and Worcestershire sauce and a bunch of other stuff. You spice it up and you have Burgoo, which is a wonderful stew that would be served out of this pot. 
The pot's priced at $75. The things that are specific to Kentucky oftentimes are the most expensive in the Louisville stoneware because this is where the collectors for it are. This is a neat showcase. This is a Cargus showcase. Interesting about it is the way it's finished. This is actually something that would have been used in a home or a fancy store of some sort. But you can see the detail. It wasn't just a utility showcase. It's got the bust in relief and that looks like it's some sort of an applied early plastic like a celluloid. It's got the nice felt lining. It's priced at $7.50 for a nice fancy showcase that you could use in a home. That's not an unexpected price. This is going to date to about 1920 at the latest. Well, I finally found a buyer for mine, but here's another one of these 1920s, 30s era baby prints where the print is the face of a baby and on the back wall you have bunnies in the wallpaper, but you have real hair. And there is something delightfully creepy about that, especially coupled with the blanket. These were a popular style in the time. Now people buy them because they think they're macabre. Out of an old publication for men's fashion in the 1920s is a scene from the famous photo play Cleopatra featuring Theta Berra, who was very famous in those days. This picture was made in California at a cost of over $500,000 and over 15,000 people and 2,000 horses were employed in its production. I guess the implication is that if you buy this suit, you'll end up with her. I am not sure how that was going to work, but it's a really neat page out of an old fashion tableau and this is $12.95. The old season greetings signs, those are supposed to look like neon but they're just made out of a bright glowing plastic and they're five dollars each. Those are from the early 60s. I'm gonna pull out and you'll see this Hornbeck table trio. Short, medium, and tall. They're all on the low side because that was 1960s and 70s modernism but these are Danish made. They want $3.75 for the set. I don't know whether it's likely to sell here for that price but that is not the wrong price in the right market. It would definitely go for that. And here is a very odd, I guess you'd call it folk art, it looks like they took a standard chair from the time and you can see that there was actually a foot pedal in the bottom. So this was originally connected to a spinning wheel and then somebody took the spinning wheel apart and mounted it as the back of the chair. So this is sort of a vernacular thing that somebody took one thing and made another of and repurposed long, long ago. It says on the tag it was done in 1876. Well, doesn't she look rakish in her Kaiser coat? That looks like camel hair from the 1950s or 60s era. Probably 60s with that color of fur collar, I would think. Priced at 150 Vintage fashion does do well. They have a nice little section of it here. Coats are something I find fairly easy to sell. If I'm in a northern climate, there will be a buyer because coats last forever. So people are willing to buy a nice vintage coat if it's in good shape because they know they're going to get a lot of use out of it. So let's go real quickly past all of these wonderful books. These are a bunch of old Harper's magazines that are framed. They have an entire slightly messy book area here. And if we go past it, we will eventually find the way to the basement. Ah, here we go to the left, and down we go. Lots of cast iron on the wall. We're in Kentucky, and cast iron, well, that's something we see a lot of here. Including this lamp post. This looks like a more recent version of a cast iron lamp post, but it's only 150. This is a neat, not for sale, unfortunately, garden display, but they use this out front in the summertime to put things out for people to see. This old grocery cart with the big wheels it has a great wood bottom. This one's priced at 99 It'd be useful to go around the antique shows with something like that. Old gun cabinet here. There is a lot of stuff in the basement, more than I'm going to have time to really look through today. But one thing that's nice is they've got sample hardware here. If you needed a piece for an old piece of furniture that you're fixing. You've got one of just about everything. This is kind of neat. It's a table made out of a grist mill wheel on top of an old metal base. So it's a marriage, but they're both from the same era. Okay, this says it's the dollar booth. Everything with a slash in the price is a dollar. But I've got to say, I was happy with my dollar dig upstairs. This just looks like sort of leftover stuff to me, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time digging there. There is a big old stainless sink from the 50s, a hundred and a quarter. More grinding stones. These sell in the hundred and a quarter to hundred thirty-five dollar range. Fun table and chair set. I like the round and I like 
like the round shapes in the other pieces. It needs some cleaning, but it's only $90 for the set. Well, those shelves are 50% off, but they're not easy to get to. I do like the Fisher Price little bear, though, so I am going to make my way through all of these chairs and see how much he is. Okay, he's marked down to $62.50. That's probably the right price for him, but he's a nice older wooden one, and the wood Fisher Price stuff does sell the best. They've got lots of farm stuff and primitives here, which makes sense because we're in that part of the country where a lot of this stuff comes from. Although you see this sort of thing in most parts of the country. I mean, there really are rural places everywhere. I really like this for only 39. It feels like it's a little loose, but it could be screwed together. Old plant stands are great for display at antique shows and they sell really well. Usually they're not for sale, in fact. It says bathroom upstairs twice here. That makes me think that they've had a little trouble with people thinking the chamber pots and bottles were intended to be used for their original purpose. I don't know how you would mistake that. You walk right by the bathroom to get down here. The BF Goodrich sign is priced at 800. When I was a kid, we would drive by this old garage in Tracyton, Washington that had this sign on the outside for years and years. And I wanted so badly to find out who the owner was and get it. And as a kid, my folks thought I wasn't serious. They didn't know I was going to end up being an antique dealer. And then this is a big double-sided one from an old mobile station. This is priced at $1,900. Those prices may seem high, but these have gone up so much. And to find it with the original stanchion that says Saucony Vacuum Oil Company, which was the parent company of mobile, well, that's why it's money. And then this is kind of fun. They've taken an old International Harvester steering wheel, probably from one of their trucks from the late 60s, early 70s, and fashioned a base that's International Harvester to go with it. They've got that priced at $225. Okay, this dealer is kind of a mess, but it's 75% off, so we've got to take at least a second when you figure right away you only have to pay a quarter of what's on the tag. Then it's worth taking a look. This golfer would be neat, but he's missing his club. The kitten in the basket is not old. Now this is neat. This is an old sardine holder and this is Majolica. Let's see if we can tell whether it's original and what kind of shape it's in. It's got a chip. It does have the sardine on the top. Definitely looks original because it's got a lot of crazing from the oil in fish. Butter dishes get stained really easily like this too. I mean I have to say at a quarter of $29 it's an awfully good buy for somebody. My Majolica guy is pretty picky for condition, though, so I think it's not for me. This gourd, when you see this, this is a Weller pottery piece as well. One of the last things they made in the 1940s before they quit production in 1948, and it's got a good signature, the script signature for Weller right on the bottom. Weller was the biggest pottery company in the world in the early 1900s, and here's the thing I probably will buy. Coming up, I've got a show in West Palm Beach, and the fellows who have the Dixie Diner, they started it, and then their kids bought it from them, and they retired, but they cover it in all these fun signs, and this one says, a wise man knows everything, but a shrewd man knows every one. And it's a plaque. That's why my customer likes these, because he wants to put them on the walls of the restaurant. And it's $3 before the discount, so that's going to cost me in a whopping 75 cents. So I will take that. Well, I have to admit, I've been influenced by the YouTube community. People seem to love cute, and they also seem to love Lefton. This guy is Lefton, and he is cute, and he's $3.50. He's a napkin holder. I don't get a lot of Easter stuff. Easter's not that long from now. I think I can hold on to it till then or someone will buy it in the meantime. So that's a buy. I had to climb to get this one. This was way in the back of a bunch of stuff, but it's only $5. I think I can get the sticker off with a hairdryer, even though they put it on the front. And this is an ad placard for Fall City Beer. These are worth $15 or $20 each now. And then I wanted to show you some things in the case. This is real Vaseline glass. This is Victorian, the Patriot and Soldier, General Ulysses S. Grant. The Victorians really loved this color. They didn't realize the uranium was not good for them to be breathing. It turned out to be a very dangerous job for the people who made it. They've got a big selection of cap guns that have just come in. I see prices everywhere from $12 to $50, and some of those are probably buys. A lot of little miniature irons here as well. They always have interesting things in the showcases. These apparently come up with a collection of harmonicas, and I always like the harmonicas. It's American Ace. It's only $15, and it has a good box. It's also got some cool straight razors. 
these are starting to be very collectible, especially if they've got the original razors and the original box. Down here, some more harmonicas and pitch pipes. And then on the bottom, he's got all this sterling silver half off, which means he's basically selling it for about scrap prices. These are all a bunch of souvenir spoons. The thing I like about this store is he buys collections, so he has depth of variety, and then when he's had them a while, he'll sell off what's left at a reasonable price for a reseller. 60s era derby glasses are the era you want. You see 1967 there for $29. That's a year I don't run into that often. And then to the right is for Kentucky basketball in 1951, showing that they won the national championship that year. He's got lots of these fun little things that I like, like cigarette lighters, shaving brushes, pocket knives, all the cool stuff. But then, up here, from a dental school in Tennessee, he's got the True Bite display, which shows all these different types of teeth. Do you know if yours are square, or tapering, or ovoid, or some combination of the bunch? And if you gotta do it, you might as well match your teeth that you already had. Well, we've got one more thing that we found, and unfortunately, the store's gonna close, so we'll get to come back and show you more from Kate is later, because we keep closing the place. This is the third day in a row. Uh, but this one is a, another shell art piece. These sell well for me in Florida, and it's got the lamp in it. It's only $9, so that's got to go with me. And with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us from Kate is Kentucky. We'll have more from here later because there's still more to show. Take care now. This is George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.